So this is a quick video that I wanted to add to my quantum field theory lecture series on Compton scattering in scalar QED, specifically on deriving the tree-level differential scattering cross-section for Compton scattering in scalar QED. And basically, let's just jump right into it. The goal of this video is to compute the tree-level Compton differential scattering cross-section as given by scalar quantum electrodynamics instead of standard QED. Scalar quantum electrodynamics given by this Lagrangian is is the scalar generalization of standard quantum electrodynamics. If you are unfamiliar with how this theory is constructed and quantized, I recommend you to my An Introduction to Scalar QED video. There's a link to that in the description. I have also done a standard QED version of this computation in a different video. This is the computation that yields the Klein-Nishina formula as the result. There is also a link in the description to that video as well. In my Scalar QED introduction video, I discuss the standard Feynman rules for Scalar QED those Feynman rules are these. Of course, I've set up the photon section to make particular sense with this calculation. I think in the table I gave in that video, I just had one entry for an external photon line, and it was just a general epsilon mu. But here, because we're doing Compton scattering, we've got one incoming photon and one outgoing photon, and so we need two polarization vector Feynman rules that are denoted differently. But because they're both external photon lines, the basic form of the Feynman rule is the same, just the photon polarization vector associated with the incoming or outgoing photon. We can look at the vertex function portion of the table and see what kind of interactions are possible. These two. Given the two possibilities, the following diagrams give the complete tree-level contribution to the reaction. We have these two reactions that are familiar from Compton scattering and normal QED, but of course we've got that extra interaction term in the scalar QED Lagrangian beyond what there's any analog for in standard QED, which gives rise to this other vertex function and also causes there to be a third diagram of the tree level for scalar QED. If we apply the Feynman rules in that table to these Feynman diagrams, what we get is this Feynman amplitude, which we can simplify down trivially to this. Physical photons are transverse, so this actually simplifies down a little bit further down to just this. Then we can take the rest frame of the initial mass of scalar boson, and that causes these these two terms to vanish, leaving us with this very simple Feynman amplitude. With the Feynman amplitude worked out, we can move on to computing the differential scattering cross-section from it. I derived the standard formula for doing this in a previous video. There's a link to that video in the description as well. That formula is this. I have used parentheses after the d-sigma throughout the rest of most of this calculation to indicate which differential the specific cross-section depends on, because this changes as we process it. Inserting the energy and momentum and masses of the problem reduces this formula to this. The desired cross-section is with respect to only the solid angle of the outgoing photon, thus the other four of the six integration variables must be integrated over. First, integrating over these variables is trivially easy because of the delta functions conserving three momentum which show up in this formula. Doing those integrations leaves us with this formula and this three momentum conservation relation. Next, we need to put the remaining differential and spherical coordinates to reveal this solid angle differential associated with the outgoing photon that we're so interested in. Then we can integrate over this momentum magnitude and we'll be done. That integration can be done by making use of that classic delta function identity for when you're integrating over delta functions that are a more complicated function of the variable you're integrating over that has a zero somewhere within the domain of integration. Its net effect is to put this absolute value of the derivative of the function that is the argument of the delta function in the denominator there. From there, the integration just sets the integration variable throughout the integrand equal to the root of the f function. Since the integration is done, we can relabel that root with the same symbol we just used for the integration variable without causing confusion, and it simplifies things to use that notation. Doing all of that, the net effect of that last integration is this formula here, where this f function derivative simply down to that. Inserting that and dividing the solid angle differential to the other side ultimately gets us to here, where of course we have this equality which allows us to write it in standard form. For the unpolarized case, all we have to do is average over the incoming photon polarizations and sum over the outgoing photon polarizations, which leaves us with this slightly modified formula. We now have both the differential scattering cross-section formulas that we need and the required Feynman amplitude.
compute. All we need to do is select the parameterization for the momentum four vectors and the polarization four vectors. The most common parameterization for this problem is the same as what is used for the standard QED version of this calculation, which yields the Klein-Nishina formula. That parameterization takes the initial mass of particle being hit by the incident photon to be at rest, something we assumed at the beginning. And it accounts for the transversality of photons. That parameterization is listed here. All we have to do then is take the modulus squared of the Feynman amplitude, insert it into the relevant scattering cross-section formula, and insert the parameterization. For the polarized case, this proceeds like this. So this is the modulus squared of the Feynman amplitude, inserting that and the parameterization, and then simplifying trivially gets us to here, and this is our final result. To get the unpolarized result, all we need to do is those extra polarization sums, and of course, because we're actually averaging over the incoming photon polarization, we need to have that factor of a half there. So this ultimately gets us this result, which we can then insert into the unpolarized differential scattering cross-section formula that we had above. This formula right there, doing that gives us this other of the two final results, and that completes our task. So now you know how to derive the tree-level differential scattering cross-section for Compton scattering as given by scalar quantum electrodynamics. It's a really quick calculation. It's kind of stunningly quick given that it's technically in the subject of quantum field theory. But regardless, I hope this video was interesting and educational. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. The barn always seemed like an impractically large unit of area to express scattering cross-sections in but who am I to argue with decades of physicists?